Well, good afternoon, everybody. Eric Lapom here with Dr. Donald Moyne, our weekly influence show where we get to talk about ideas to help you become even more successful. And today we are going to be talking primarily about LinkedIn and sharing some terrific strategies with you guys on LinkedIn. And uh, Dr. Moyne, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Eric. How's, how's your day been so far? My day's been good. You know, I've, I've, I've made a few sales today. All I've, right. I've been, I did some coaching calls. I'm, of course, excited about our show here. Mm -hmm. So it's been a real productive day. And and uh, I know that with, with LinkedIn, you know, you really enjoy being on LinkedIn and, mm -hmm. and you, you know, really learned some, some great things that uh, can help people be more successful on LinkedIn. So maybe you can just speak about, start off with what do you like about LinkedIn? And we can then jump right into some of the content. Wow. I could do a whole show on what I, what, all the things I love about LinkedIn. Um, first of all, I have to thank you, Eric, because I was, I have a confession to make, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I was one of those guys who said, I don't need social media. You know, I'd written a bunch of best-selling books. I'd written 500 articles. I had clients in several different countries. And then COVID-19 hit. And it, it affected a lot of my clients. I have a lot of clients that do seminar marketing. Eric and I, back in the olden days before COVID, we used to do a number of seminars. Some of you guys have been to our seminars and I, I still had a lot of clients that did seminar marketing and that was shut down by COVID. So their business was really hurting. And they said to me, hey, Dr. Moyne, I love you, love working with you, but you know, I can't afford you right now. And so my business went way down when COVID hit the big pandemic. So I need, I realized I need to pivot. I need to do something different in my business. And so I talked to Eric. I talked to some other uh, friends of mine who I really trust. I, I uh, respect what they have to say, what their judgment is. And I said, if I only had the time to join one social media platform, what would it be? And they all said LinkedIn. They said, anyone who's anyone in business, is on LinkedIn. So I checked it out, folks. There's almost 900,000 people on LinkedIn. And I know Facebook is bigger. There's probably some other sites that are bigger, but you know, LinkedIn is the social media platform for business people. And I love business. I love sales. I'm all about business, helping companies and helping people increase their profits. So I joined LinkedIn. I had zero connections. I had to write my profile, didn't know what I was doing. And it was very slow going at first, very slow going. I think at the first month I had about 30 connections and I thought, man, how long is it going to take me to reach a hundred, to reach 500? And that was two and a half years ago. And so I decided I need to figure this out. So I studied with some LinkedIn marketing masters, people who uh, basically make a full-time living being LinkedIn marketing masters. And I probably spent 200 hours studying with them. And some of the things I'm going to share with you are things I learned from them and that I developed my own system. And now today, two and a half years later, short two and a half years, I have over 11,000 connections, people I could never have met in real life. Uh, presidents of major companies are connected to me. I've got thousands of people who are my ideal clients. They fit my ideal client profile who are connected with me. Um, lots of entrepreneurs. I've got over 200 lawyers, top lawyers connected with me. I work, I've, I've helped law firms uh, grow their business and thousands of financial planners, uh, mortgage agents, real estate agents, uh, top insurance agents. And I picked up a lot of business from LinkedIn. So I want to thank you, Eric, and I'm going to share with you a couple of insights. I'm going to turn it over to Eric, and he's going to share with you. You know, Eric is the master of Facebook and Facebook marketing. I'm not on Facebook. I don't know anything about it. So Eric's going to share with you some great insights about how to market yourself 
on Facebook. So the first thing, ladies and gentlemen, is you have to have a profile on LinkedIn that attracts your ideal clients. And so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm connected to so many people and, and I like to read their profiles as I have the time to do that. And I am just appalled at how poorly written, how unappealing a lot of these profiles are. Uh, the worst thing, of course, is people don't include their picture and they, they just have these profiles that are actually sometimes I think they're designed to repel people instead of attract them. And um, I've helped a lot of my clients uh, rewrite their profiles to attract their ideal clients. I helped uh, one of my clients who I worked with them on Saturday and Sunday uh, this last weekend. And she is attracting all kinds of, she's a financial planner, attracting all kinds of high net worth people her uh, biggest group of clients work for Costco, you know, the Costco stores. And she has now attracted more than 100 people, including uh, managers of stores, general managers, top executives at Costco headquarters in um, up in Washington. She's in Southern California. The headquarters of Costco is up in the state of Washington. These are people she it would have taken her years to connect with in real life. She's picked up a bunch of business. So you have to work on optimizing your profile. I know it's a lot of work, but folks, it really pays off because one of the things that people do when you send them an invitation to connect is they look at your profile, they glance at your profile and it needs to appeal to them. They have to think, gee, I'm going to get something out of connecting with this person. They have some expertise. They have some skill. They have some wisdom. They can help me in some way, or they're at least that they are interesting. So you want to show you put a little bit of thought into it. I have rewritten my profile, I think about six times, and I'm about to do it again. You can check out my profile, uh, Dr. Donald Moyne on LinkedIn and kind of get an idea, you know, steal a few ideas on how you can build the profile. So with that, Eric, I'm going to turn it back to you to share some insights about Facebook and Facebook marketing. Fantastic. Well, it's great to be with all of you uh, who enjoy our show from all over the world. I've gotten some really great feedback from many people, and I'd love it if you type into the chat and let us know what part of the world are you joining us from. And uh, Dr. Moyne and I would love it if you would connect with us on LinkedIn. So just you know, type our name in the search bar, and and uh, and you can send over a, a connection request. I want to share um, a couple of ideas, and the first one is if you think about when we send somebody a LinkedIn message, and prospecting is like one of my favorite things to do. So. I love to prospect people over social media, send direct messages over Facebook or over, over LinkedIn. And if you think about it, where does that message go? And for a lot of people, it goes to the smartphone. So some people do LinkedIn or Facebook on their computer, but a lot of people are consuming the content and scrolling and interacting on their smartphone. So if that's true, if they have the LinkedIn app and I send a direct message over LinkedIn, now let me flip the script here. Now I'm going to send a direct message to somebody and prospect them over Facebook. And if they have the Facebook app, then where's that message going to go? It's going to go to the smartphone. If they have an Instagram and I send them an Instagram message, it's going to go to the smartphone. So if I text them or if I email them, if they have email on their smartphone, which a lot of people do. So all of the messages are going to their smartphone anyway. So if you're making like a big distinction of, well, you know, LinkedIn is the business, social media and, and Facebook is the personal one or Instagram is the personal one. I don't think of it like that. I, I want to fish where the fish are. And in other words, if the people are on Instagram, they're on LinkedIn, they're on Facebook. I just look at it as a lead source. Mm -hmm. I don't care mm -hmm. how I prospect him. I prospected Dr. Moyne, this gentleman the other day uh, named mm -hmm. Greg. Greg owns an ad specialty company. The last year of, I had reported numbers for them, they did 500 million in ad specialties. They have a thousand salespeople. Mm -hmm. So I messaged Greg over Facebook and I said, hey, Greg, I got this new prospecting product. It'll help your people prospect. 
if you have any of these thousand people that need help with prospecting, you know, I'd love to have, he's the owner, introduce me to the person in your company that would handle that. That was the message that I sent over Facebook. And on Facebook, the there's a circle when I send the message. And if they read the message, the circle gets filled in with their profile photo. So Greg didn't respond, but the circle got filled in with his profile photo. In other words, I got a message through to an owner of a $500 million company by sending a direct message over Facebook. So that's my first tip. My second tip is right now, Dr. Moyne and I are live streaming on LinkedIn. We're also live streaming on Facebook and on YouTube, and we're also podcasting. But one thing you might consider is doing a LinkedIn show. So we have our show called The Influence Show, which live streams on on LinkedIn. So what does that mean? That means we just call the live stream, we call it a show. We gave it a name and a brand, The Influence Show, and we just declared that. So you could declare a show like what we've done, and maybe you have a real estate show, or you have a mortgage show, or you have a, a show about your community, like I live in Placer County. And you could have a Placer County show and you could get a partner like I have Dr. Moyne as my partner and you could partner up with somebody else in Placer County and you could have the only LinkedIn show in your community and that would position you as an expert. And then I have one uh, additional idea I want to share at, at this point. And that is that, and you can do this both on, on LinkedIn and on Facebook, is you promote what's called a lead magnet. And a lead magnet is where somebody gives you their email address. They're like opting into your email list. In other words, they're giving your email address in exchange for a white paper, a special report, uh, a course, um, a Zoom meeting. And so I did a class on Saturday a three-hour class. Dr. Wayne, it was three-hour virtual class. I had somebody say, Eric, who's going to come for three hours <laughs> on Zoom? And I said, well, I'm going to make the content that good. And so anyway, the way I, I promoted it is I, I basically promised the moon and the stars. I said this, I'm doing a, a Zoom this Saturday, and it is the best Zoom I've ever done in the history of the history of the world. It's going to be amazing. You're going to want to see it. If you want my best content, you know, decades of information shrunk down into three hours, I'm going to blow you away with this information. So that was the kind of post that I did. And then I said, if you want, instead of giving the link, I said, if you want the, um, the invitation type the word yes below. And I did that to have the algorithms boost the post up because if I gave the link, there's no reason for them to engage with me. So I forced them to engage with me. And then I said, if you can't make it, but you want the recording type the word yes below. And I had like 55 people <laughs> type the word yes below. And then when they typed the word yes below, then I included in the link for them to register. So there was over a hundred comments, which further put the algorithms, whatever that means and got the post out there. And so if all of you that are, are watching this right now, Consider promoting something, not all the time, you know, one out of every eight posts or so you can promote something and you could give a link and that's a way that you can draw people to you. So those are a, a couple of my favorite ideas. And I'll, Dr. Moyne, I'll turn it back to you. Oh, those are great, Eric. Those were fantastic. Uh, golden nuggets. Uh, folks, uh, I see a lot of our friends here. I'm reading your comments. Thanks for the positive feedback. Uh, write this down in your notes. My ideal clients are on LinkedIn. My ideal clients are on LinkedIn. And I really believe that I've, I found that's true for, for myself, for my clients. As I said, anyone who's anyone in business is on LinkedIn. And one of the most amazing things about it is that you can market to them for free. As Eric said, you can market through direct messages, you can market through posts, you can write articles, you can post videos. I've done all those things on my LinkedIn and I've gotten a lot of engagement. Uh, one of the things that happened this weekend, I was busy working with some clients on Saturday and I worked part of Sunday also, and I didn't spend much time on my own personal LinkedIn because I was working on their LinkedIn. 
and I was reading my some of the uh, direct messages that came into me over the weekend. And one of the uh, guys I'm connected to invited me to be a speaker at a, a training event that he's having, uh, you know, in the future. And you know, it, it's it's an incredible opportunity because I'm going to be exposed to hundreds of people who could be my who could fit my ideal client profile. And this is someone who I never would have met if it wasn't for LinkedIn. So the second uh, thing I want to share with you is to write appealing invitations to connect. On LinkedIn, you can do a search for your ideal client in whatever kind of business they're in. They have a little search engine and you just type in the business, the profession, you know, for myself, I have about six different uh, uh, industries or professions that I like to, that I, I, I'm, I'm open to working with almost anyone if they're honest and ethical and, you know, just good people. But I uh, really have deep, deep expertise in working with financial planners, insurance agents, uh, uh, attorneys, mortgage brokers, real estate agents, entrepreneurs, and people running, um, raising money for their business, hedge fund managers, and also life coaches. I've helped so many life coaches, and Eric has too. Uh, we've, we've actually shared clients together who are life coaches. We've helped them build their business. And so you can target them with like just a, a, a rifle-like accuracy, just pinpoint accuracy on LinkedIn. But you need to when, when you send out an invitation, you, you can find all these names on LinkedIn and you can send an invitation to connect, but you, you also have the opportunity to write a note. It's very limited. You can only write, I don't know, it's, it's like uh, 250 characters, you know, it's like two or three sentences. So give them a reason to connect with you. I probably get about 10 people a day who send me on average uh, an invitation to connect to so, say, you know, but most of them don't even send a note. And the ones who send the note that say, hey, Dr. Moyne, I've read your book, or I attended a webinar you did, or I saw you speak at a seminar, really love your work, I'd love to connect with you. You know, bing, I'm going to connect with those people. But people that don't even have the courtesy or, or put in the minimal effort to connect. Now, if it's if it's people like you guys, you're on the show here, I recognize your name or you just, all you have to do is say, I'm a friend of Eric Lawholm's. All right. I'm a, I'm a client of Eric Lawholm's. I like Eric Lawholm. Just mention his name. I'm going to connect with you. But, you know, there are other people that uh, they just, it, it just amazes me how lazy they are. And they say, you know, I have people calling me up and they say, hey, Dr. Moore, I'm seeing you're getting all this business on LinkedIn. You've helped these other people, but no one's connected with me. I'm, I'm getting very low quality connections, very few connections. I'm finding it very hard to grow my number of connections. And I find, and I ask, well, what do you, when you send out your invitation to connect, what do you say? Oh, I don't, I don't say anything. I just click the button, invite them to connect with you. So, you know, Folks, you have to have an appealing invitation to connect. I have, as I mentioned, I have about six or so ideal client profiles, people I love, love, love to work with. And I have a pre-written invitation to connect. So all I have to do is just type in their name. Uh, Hello, George. Uh, my name is Dr. Donald Moyne. You probably heard of me if you're in sales or marketing. Uh, uh, I looked at your profile. You have a fascinating profile. I've worked with a lot of people in your industry. It'd be great to connect. It's all pre-written. I just type in their name and I have different, uh, I, like I said, I have six pre-written ones and they work like magic. I've connected with company presidents with, I mean, just superstars in their fields. One of the guys who connect with me about a year ago in Europe, he was named the number one lawyer in Europe. And this wasn't, there's, it would take me years if I tried to go out in the real world, get on an airplane. I don't know how I would connect with this guy. And he not only connected, but he suggested that after we interacted a little bit on LinkedIn, he suggested that we write an article together. So it's just amazing who you can connect with, but you have to put a little bit of effort into it. Okay, I wanna share another tip with you and i'm going to turn it back over to eric you know eric i just realized something we're going to have to do another show on 
uh, social media marketing. It is so powerful. You can, folks, you can get so much business free of charge by marketing on social media that I'm not going to have time to get through all my tips, but I, I, uh, I really want to encourage you to explore this more deeply because I know that it can bring you guys a lot of money, a lot of additional, if you're in sales, a lot of additional sales, uh, commission income, et cetera. My next tip is that once you connect, send them a warm greeting, send them a warm, I call it a connection message. And this is where you say something like, uh, Dear Mary, it's great to connect with you on LinkedIn. I want to thank you for all the contributions you've made to or all the great work you've done with or, or all the people you've helped being a life coach. And then uh, tell them a little bit about yourself. You know, my areas of expertise are and mention a couple things and then say, I help my clients with and then just wrap it up and say, you know, it's great to connect with you. I'm open to meeting with you uh, via Zoom or having a phone call. Uh, let me know if you'd like to do that uh, warmly, uh, Dr. Donald Des Moines. You know, folks, I probably have five to 20 people connect with me on the average day on LinkedIn. And I would say of those people, let's say it's 10 a day, only two or maybe three bother to send me a message telling me what they do, saying it's great to connect with you. And then, you know, I get calls from people and I get emails from people saying, uh, LinkedIn marketing doesn't work. I'm not getting any business from it. And then I, I, I ask them, what are, when, when people connect with you, what do you do? Oh, I just wait for them to read my profile and, and contact me. I mean, they don't even send a, a greeting message. You know, it's like building a friendship, folks. You, you, you think about how you build a relationship in real life. It's actually very on social media. You want if you want to build a real relationship, you have to show interest in the other person. You have to int that, that's going to be my next tip after I I am. Um, I'm going to turn over to Eric in just a moment, but I want to talk with you about how to interact with people so that it leads to business. But you, it's like in real life, folks, you have to interact with them because you want to form a real relationship. It has to be about more than just sales. You have to show an interest in the person, find out what they do. And it's actually fun, you know, to, if you like people like I do, I love people. If you'd like to meet people and help them, help them build their business, help them using your fields of expertise. So have those pre- written messages that you where you can just add their name maybe customize it a little bit and that's how you start a great relationship eric i'm going to turn it over to you fantastic well those are great ideas and i just want to take a moment and acknowledge all of you for for being here mm -hmm. plug it into our show you can always catch the recordings of previous episodes if you're new to the show just go to theinfluenceshow.com and you can get the podcast information and how you can watch the replays on YouTube, et cetera. And um, uh, Dr. Martin, I have you, I don't think I've mentioned this to you. Maybe I did, but mm -hmm. I'm rebuilding mm -hmm. the website, not me, my tech team. We're going to have an All awesome right. new website that we're going to be a proud <laughs> Fantastic. Of. And uh, so that's going to be happening here real, real soon. But I want to share mm -hmm. a, a couple of stories of mm -hmm. ways that I've used LinkedIn and Facebook. And I want you to, as you're listening, ask yourself, could I use this idea in my business? And so one of my favorite ways to prospect is to prospect somebody that I'm like really excited about meeting or doing business with. So I wanted to meet Tim Pruitt, who is the CEO of the Hunger Project, which is one of the most influential organizations in the world focused on eradicating hunger globally. And so he's, you know, he's the CEO. He's a real significant human being. So I looked for him on social media, found him on LinkedIn, and we weren't connected, but it let me do, I think, what's called an in-mail, which allowed me to send him a message. And um, I'm not all that familiar with in-mail and how that works. But the bottom line is this. I was able to send this CEO a message 
and I asked him for an appointment. Now, I did something that very few people will do. I went to the company website and I filled out the form. And I said, hey, I just sent a, a message to your CEO over LinkedIn. Please let him know to be looking for a message. Because the person that's manning the website, they get a message like that that's directed to the CEO. Their job is to go to the CEO and say, go look at your LinkedIn because this person sent me this message. So I got them working for me now. And uh, he responded. And within 24 hours, Dr. Boyne, I got on a cell phone call with him. And that turned into a face-to-face -face meeting. He's in the East Coast. And we had lunch together in San Francisco a couple of weeks ago. And that all happened over LinkedIn that had I not had um, the know-how or the understanding of uh, social media, that would not have happened. So that's my first story. The second idea is one of the ways I like to prospect is with content. So I'll send a LinkedIn message to a decision maker. And, and Dr. Moyne made a great point about how you could do a search on LinkedIn and I could say, you know, give me all the sales managers, that's a good prospect for me, that are second level connection to me. So then I add them to try to get them to become a first level connection. And then when they become a first level connection, that allows me to send them a direct message. So I could send them a message that would go like this. I'm reaching out to see if you would like a free copy of my new audiobook, Continuous Sales Improvement. And then I would do a screenshot of the cover of the book. You know, let me know if you like a copy. And then some of them will reply back and they go, sure, send me a copy. So then I send them a copy of my audiobook, and that opens up the, the beginning of the relationship. So instead of asking for an appointment, sometimes I'll ask if they'd like a free piece of content. And you all could do this by, you could write an article, publish it on LinkedIn, and then go to your decision maker over LinkedIn and ask him, hey, I recently wrote an article about this. Would you like to um, see a copy of the article? And they say yes, then you send them a copy of the article. This is the distinction between what I would call um, push marketing versus attraction marketing. And it's not that one's better than the other. They're just two different distinctions. Push marketing would be I recently wrote an article about this. I thought you might be interested. Here's the article. And then I push it on it. Attraction marketing would be, I recently wrote an article. This is what it's about. If you'd like a copy of the article, message me back. So I'm attracting them to me. Two different approaches. So there's that idea. And then I want to tell you a very creative thing that I am doing to raise $3,000 for a homeless man to buy him a car that will be not only his transfer, transportation, but it will be the roof over his head. He's living outdoors. I met him uh, while he was living in the in his car that got repossessed in the bank parking lot where I bank. He was sleeping in his car there, and I noticed him one day, and I built a friendship with him. And long story short, he lost his car. They impounded it, towed it, lost it, whatever. He lost his car. And I, he has a cell phone. And so I was reached out to him the other day and I asked him what was going on. He goes, well, I moved to Southern California. And I said, oh, okay. I said, where are you living? He goes, I'm living outdoors. I said, what happened to your car? Whatever the story was, he lost his car. So I decided I want to raise $3,000 and I didn't want to reach into my own pocket and come up with three grand. So I posted on Facebook and I had a photo of he and I together when he was up here. And I said, my friend Darren, he's homeless and I'm raising $3,000 for a car. And if you'd like to make a small contribution, send me a direct message. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dr. Morin, I had $1,000 within 24 hours. And then this gentleman sent me a check for $1,000 that I haven't counted. Wow. Darren, <laughs> $1,000, Dr. Morin. That's amazing. <laughs> I Facebook messaged him. His name is Matt. And I said, hey, Matt, you know, you've helped me in the past with some people and my friend. And he goes, yeah, I'm good for a thousand. I'll send you the check. Mm -hmm. And so that was all done. Creative uses of social media. Mm -hmm. So the people we want to reach out to, they're all on social media, whether it's LinkedIn or Facebook, Instagram or all of them. Mm -hmm. And it's just getting more comfortable with it. And not too long ago, Dr. Boyd was not on LinkedIn. And he said, mm -hmm. you know what? Let me get on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And now you said, how many connections are you up to? 
Uh, it's about 11,300 in two and a half years. And they're very high quality connections. You know, folks, uh, one of the other keys is you really want to appeal to your ideal uh, clients. I've, ha I've had a few of my clients who have come to me and said, hey, I've got, I, I remember very early on, I only had about 1,000 connections on LinkedIn, but I was already getting some business. And I had a guy come to me who had almost 10,000 connections, which I couldn't even imagine. Uh, and he'd been on for many, many years. And he said, I'm not getting any business. And I asked him, well, well, what, tell me about your connections. And I realized he was just, he was, he was actually, this is hilarious when I think about it, Eric, but he was posting stuff on LinkedIn, like connect with me. It was almost like he was desperate. Like I'll connect with anyone. It, it was, he was sending out messages like this. And so he was getting just anyone to connect with him and he wasn't doing quality content that was an uh, you know you you were just talking about the power of content and that was something that i was going to talk about also because folks here uh the the chronology of it how, what i found is the first three or four parts of the formula for making a lot of money on linkedin or other social media and having a lot of fun and and making real connections with people is number one you've got to optimize your profile so that people respond to it they respect you they want to do business with you they're interested in you number two send out invitations to your ideal clients and have a message of an appealing message with that number three when they connect with you send a warm greeting message compliment them tell them a little bit about your areas of expertise how you help people and and let them know that if you are interested I'm open to a Zoom meeting, a one-on-one -on -one Zoom meeting, or a phone call. And that's where you really, that's where you do your selling. Here's, here's the greatest irony I've ever discovered about LinkedIn. You don't actually close a lot of your sales on LinkedIn. If you push too hard to close a sale on LinkedIn, it actually turns people off. What LinkedIn is brilliant at doing is enabling you to connect with almost anyone uh, in the world of business and the, and to build, to start to build a real relationship with them. But where you get the business is when you get them on a phone call or on a Zoom call and, or, or you meet them in real life. I've actually met a few people in real life if they're down here in Southern California and uh, or, they're, or they're coming through. And if, you know, if it's worth my time and worth their time, we've actually met for coffee or for lunch. And a couple of people I've met for dinner, they said, hey, Dr. Moyne, I'm in town. I'd like to take you out to dinner. And, you know, if if I, I think something could develop from this, I say, sure. So uh, write this down in your notes, folks. Content is king. Content is king. That's something that has made Disney a multi, multi-billion dollar company is their content along with the theme parks is their content and the same is true for you so now that you have connected with your ideal client pros you know profiles uh these these people that fit your ideal client profile and uh they can see everything that you put up on linkedin there are several different things you can do number one is a post now a post is very limited it's limited to about 1250 characters that's not very long, but you can actually say quite a bit. So you can share success stories with people, tell them how you've helped other clients of yours. You can write about current events, make a, uh, an intelligent observation if you're in financial planning or insurance or uh, you're in the mortgage business, you can talk about mortgage rates, how to get a, get a great rate on your mortgage. If you're in real estate, you can talk about the real estate market and how to uh, sell your home in this market for top dollar and you can help attract people to you can target people in your geographic area and you can encourage people to list with you to meet with you uh, etc so 
a post is is uh, is relatively short. You can post videos. I've posted when Eric and I have done different webinars together. I've posted links, and we've gotten a lot more people to watch the webinar or the video that we've done. So you you can post videos. You can um, uh, you can put up just all kinds of attachments. So if you've written an article, if you have a sp sometimes people. Sp Believe it or not, they share spreadsheets of different information. You can anything that that's in in stored in your computer. You can post uh, as as an attachment. Um, another thing you can do is write articles, and this is something very few people do. Now, there's a there's a weakness I want to share with you about posts. Posts are very ephemeral; they only last a short period of time, and when you're connected to over 10,000 people like I am, you know, there's just a constant stream in your feed. There's new things coming up, new things coming up, and people forget about it. And it gets buried, and it's very hard to look up an old post. The beautiful thing about an article is that when people click on your articles on LinkedIn, they stay up forever. And so you might have written an article a year ago, two years ago, 10 years ago, and when people click on your articles, they can they can read them. They can learn more about you, the services you offer, how you help people as a life coach, uh, as a real estate agent, as a financial planner, uh, whatever it is that you do. It, even if you're selling, you're selling certain kinds of products. Uh, I had a guy as a client a few years ago who sold roofing products. These are like he would sell to apartment owners, shopping center owners. These are sealants and other things that totally protect your roof, make sure no water penetrates, et cetera, et cetera. And you know, you he can target his ideal clients on LinkedIn. So you want to create content. And sometimes when people contact me and they say, hey, Dr. Moyne, I see that you're getting a lot of business on LinkedIn. I've heard that other people are doing that. That's why they have almost 900,000 people, uh, nine, nine, excuse me, 900 million. And by the way, folks, there's only what, what, how many people are in the United States? There's only like 320 million or 340 million. I don't know, but it's like one third of that. And there's three times as many people. So I've made some great connections. I've gotten business overseas eric and i eric we had our client uh, tim in singapore you know and uh he's on linkedin and i've had clients in australia and uh, brazil and other countries canada sheila was in canada uh mm -hmm. and she's on she's active on linkedin so you can you can get clients in other countries free of charge on linkedin but you need you you have to be active you can't just join and even and put up your profile and just send an occasional direct message, you have to post content. Um, and that's, uh, well, I've got a bunch of other techniques to share with you, but we'll save those for another time. I'm going to turn back over to Eric to share any final insights. And folks, I, I, I want to thank you for your positive feedback here. Um, I really appreciate it. I appreciate all of you. I see our friend from Panama City. We've our friends from Canada. We have people from Southern California, people talking about the businesses that they're around. I see there's some financial planners, some insurance agents here. Eric, I want to turn it over to you for any final insights you'd like to share with all these great people. Fantastic. Well, I got a couple ideas to share. And one of them is um, our show is a podcast. And uh, you can get the podcast information at um, theinfluenceshow.com. It's a great way to catch up on previous episodes or if you want to listen to an episode more than once. And it's also a great way to share with your friends that are interested in uh, this conversation. This is the only place right now that Dr. Moyne is providing free content at this level on this weekly show. And so um, it's a great opportunity to uh, to re-listen on the podcast, theinfluenceshow.com. And if you'd like a copy of this class that I did on uh, Saturday, it is likely the best three-hour training I've ever done. Just send me an email, eric at ericoffhome.com, and I will send you a recording of that. I've got a couple of final thoughts to share. And the next one is that um, if you think about LinkedIn – from a place of what do people want, mm -hmm. right? People do things for self-serving reasons. Mm -hmm. And social media companies understand that we want views 
We want likes. We want comments. Mm -hmm. So if you give people what they want, in other words, if you're prospecting somebody over LinkedIn, go to their profile, comment on their post, hit the like button. And if they're paying attention to their notifications, they're going to see that you did that. And based on the law of reciprocity, if you start regularly commenting and liking on their posts, they may start commenting and liking on your posts mm -hmm. and you can further that business relationship through that or those organic means. The next idea is if you are prospecting on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. add in prospect by any means necessary. In other words, mm -hmm. find them on Facebook, send them a message. Or sometimes on LinkedIn, their email is published and you can send them a message over email. Sometimes their phone number's there. Or act like a private investigator and go online and Google them. And sometimes there's public information. You might be able to go to their company website. Many company websites display the email addresses of the staff members. And so how I think about prospecting on LinkedIn is I don't view sending the direct message as the final step. Mm -hmm. I view it as one opportunity. And if I'm a private investigator, I could find other ways of reaching out. For example, our guest that we had a couple of weeks ago from the movie, mm -hmm. The Pharmacist on Netflix, Dan Schneider, how I got him on our show, I went to his company website. I prospected him through the, the web form. Mm -hmm. And then I found him on Facebook and I sent him a direct message on Facebook. And he responded, I believe, within 24 hours. So I prospected him two different ways. And my last tip has to do with a posting strategy. And this is a strategy I call an engagement post. Mm -hmm. So when people are scrolling on social media on their smartphone, they're just, it's just like a way to fill time. It's just us as human beings, we scroll, scroll, scroll. Mm -hmm. And so give people a post that they can engage in. So here's one you guys can try. You can try it out right now. How old were you when you bought your first home? And that post, it tends to get a lot of response and is especially effective for a real estate agent because when they fill it in, it starts the possibility of a real estate conversation, which could turn into a direct message for prospecting. Well, I had a client who is in the vision business, like eyeglasses. So she took it and said, how old were you when you got your first pair of eyeglasses? Mm -hmm. And she got a lot of engagement. So me as a sales trainer, I'll say, um, who made a sale this week so far? And I'll let people kind of brag about themselves like I did, right? And then I'll, I'll go on there and acknowledge them. So that's a great engagement post that's a part of what I do for a living. So when you think about posting, if you want engagement, Think about how can you frame it in a way that would create engagement or look at other posts that have a lot of engagement and just model the post or tweak the post in the way like that it would fit for your business or your brand. And I do want to thank all of you for being here today. And uh, you, our listeners, make the show possible and, and it allows Dr. Boy and I to add value. And so that's everything that I want to share. And I'll turn it over to you, Dr. Boy, if there's any final thoughts you want to share today. Folks, remember that the most important ingredient of success in anything that you want to do is your belief in yourself, your mindset. And so I'd like to invite you to anchor this in. I use a, a method from neuro linguistic programming. Put your hand on your heart and tell yourself this right now. I can do it. I can do it. I can master LinkedIn marketing. I can master social media marketing. I can do it. I can meet my ideal clients on LinkedIn. Folks, you have to believe you can do it. You, you have to believe in the power of what social media, the right social media, not just any social media, not just, you know, posting pictures of your lunch on, you know, Facebook, uh, <laughs> that's not going to bring you any business. Uh, but, you know, the right kind of engagement on social media, it's just miraculous how much business 
it can bring you at little to no cost, except for you know some of your time. Uh, so I want to encourage you to have that belief because I know when I first got started, just a short two and a half years ago, I knew nothing about it. It seemed very daunting. It seemed overwhelming. It was it was slow going at first, and then it just picked up and picked up, and it it, it just kind of snowballs. It's very exciting. So God bless you all. Uh, thank you all for being here. I want to wish you a fantastic, tremendous week. And uh, Eric and I look forward to seeing all of you next Monday, the same time, the same place. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.